Welcome to another episode of BM Sculptures. This week I'm going to show you exactly how I made this one-of-a-kind shop chair. I am in desperate need of a new shop chair. I bought this thing probably two or three years ago on Amazon. It's super wobbly. I have bolts and screws falling out weekly. It is just cheaply made and just a poor design. So first thing I'm gonna do is take this thing completely apart. Um, and even doing that's a challenge because it seems like every single screw is stripped. So I basically have to grind away a little channel so that I can get a flathead screwdriver to take the screw out. For this new chair, you guessed it, I'm gonna be using chain link for the legs and backrest. And I'm gonna make it a swivel seat uh, because the swivel seat is a necessity in my shop and I found this massive bolt and nut to use as my swivel. The first thing I need to do is see if I could even weld chain link and kind of how to do it properly. So here I'm just testing to see if I can do it. The test was a success and I found out that the best way of welding the chain link is by using gravity. So here I'm using the existing stool legs to be basically my template and I'm going to be basically wrapping this chain around the legs with these screws that you see to hold it in place and I'm going to use gravity and just weld as is. I start by tack welding both sides of the chain link. That way in the future when I take this off and if I have any minor adjustments, I can just easily bend it or break it and then re-weld it. I then cut both legs in half right down the center so that the nut can fit right in between all four legs. And you see the nut here, it actually doesn't have four perfectly square sides, so I'm gonna have to, wait a minute, not that nut. Oh, that's more like it. You see this nut here, it doesn't have four perfectly square sides, so I'm gonna have to grind away two of the sides. That way the chain can uh, be welded appropriately on each side. I weld the nut in the center of the four legs and it's actually a lot harder than it looks. It's extremely difficult to get these things perfectly centered so that the legs are all at the exact same height. So it took a little bit of manipulation, um, but at the end of the day, I think I got it right. I wanna take a quick second and let you know that I respond to every single comment. I will respond to your comment if you have any questions, concerns, thoughts about future videos, let me know. Um, the only people I won't respond to are robots or if it's a, some language I don't know of and, and can't interpret it. I don't, I know a little bit of Spanish, maybe could half answer Spanish. seat. All right, it is time to start working on the seat. Now, I have some scrap wood here, I have some walnut, white oak, and ipe. And what I want to do here is create a chaotic cutting board style seat. All right, let's do it. I'm first going to cut them all to length. And I'm gonna rip them the same width. I'm gonna do these in two separate glue ups because I'm gonna be stacking them on top of one another and then running them through the bandsaw.
Once dry, I scrape all the glue off before using my number six hand plane to make a perfectly flat board. This way, when I throw it through the thickness planer, it will create two perfectly flat sides. Now it's time to add the chaos in the chaotic cutting board and I'm just cutting these all at completely random lengths and then I'm going to rotate them around to make a different design. Okay, so I have never done this before and I'm extremely nervous. I'm basically going to glue both these together and then cut with the bandsaw these designs out. So then I have basically like book matched ends to where then I could switch both designs up and then piece them together. I think it's gonna look really cool, but I honestly don't even know if it's gonna work. So, so I'm just gonna do it and hopefully I didn't waste all this time creating these boards. Let's do it. mustache for so long so to get rid of the mustache I'm going to cut both these boards right down the center that way I have four different designs here that I could kind of mess around with and get the exact design and orientation I want. To cut a perfect circle out of this thing I'm going to be using this Jasper Circle Pro jig uh, that basically uses my router and I can create a perfect circle with this thing. First time using this, I absolutely love it. It saves so much time. If you're interested in this, I have a link to it in the description. Be sure to check it out. I'm really loving the look of this thing and how this thing really turned out. It really is something pretty cool and something I've never done before. So it just makes it that much sweeter. I'm going to be putting a piece of eight inch steel around this entire seat. So here I'm using tape just to get a exact measurement of where I need to cut my steel. I'm using my really high tech and fancy body weight machine to make this perfect circular bend. If you're interested in this machine, just go eat fast food three to five times a week and you'll be able to make a perfect circle just like this. Once I have a rough circular shape, I end up using as many clamps as I can to basically make this thing form fitting to this seat. Off camera, I used my Jasper Circle Pro to cut out another piece out of plywood, just an eighth inch smaller. That way I'm gonna glue this to my seat 
and then the eighth inch steel will fit flush with that top part of the seat. And then I'm gonna use a piece of scrap eighth inch steel as a base plate and I'm gonna cut it out so it fits perfectly flush with this circle. and then tack weld the base plate to the sides and this is gonna be my support and structure for this seat. Um, I'm actually gonna finish these welds but I'm gonna do like a half inch at a time because I ended up burning the wood underneath it got so hot and here I actually caught the wood on fire and I actually had to use some water and, and get the fire out. This bolt has some raised lettering on the end, so I just use my angle grinder and grind that right off so I have a perfectly flat bolt head. Uh, once that's flat, I will tack weld on all the sides before laying down the full welds on this bolt. Swivels really well, but will it hold me? Oh, looks like it does. We are good. Now that everything's going to plan, it's time to put a round over on the seat so it's a comfy spot for my butt to rest. Now that the seat is sanded up to 220, it's time to attach the backrest. Here I'm using a clamp just to get it in the appropriate position before welding it on. And we are down the home stretch now. All that's left to do is clean up all this metal. I'm using a wire brush here. Um, and then it's time to finish the seat and we are done. Let's get ready for that finish montage. Wondering how I get this fancy schmancy spinning stool? Well, here it is. I just have a cordless drill and a little lazy Susan. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. It is viewers like you that make it possible for me to make these videos. If you like it, comment, let me know what you think. And until next time, this is Blake from BM Sculptures.